Hey guys, it's your girl Sage. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night whenever this video finds you. I'm here with Our Daily Bread and for today we have Jeremiah chapter 19, the sign of the broken flask. Thus says the Lord, go and get a potter's earthen flask and take some of the elders of the people and some of the elders of the priests and go out to the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the posture gate, and proclaim there the words that I will tell you. And say, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring such a catastrophe on this place that whoever hears it, his ears will tingle. Because they have forsaken me and made this an alien place, because they have burned incense in it to other gods, whom neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah had known, and have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. They have also built the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or speak, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold... The days are coming, says the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. And I will make void the counsel of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by sword before their enemies and by the hands of those who seek their lives. Their corpses I will give as meat for the birds of, of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. I will make the city desolate and a hissing. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and hiss because of all its plagues. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And everyone shall eat the flesh of his friend in the siege and in the desperation of which their enemies and those who seek their lives shall drive them to despair. Then ye shall break the flask in the sight of the men who go with you and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Even so, I will break this people and this city as one breaks a potter's vessel, which cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet till there is no place to bury. Thus I will do to this place, says the Lord, and to its inhabitants, and make this city like Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled like the place of Tophet because of all the houses on whose roofs they have burned, they have burned incense to all the hosts of heaven and poured out drink offerings to other gods. Then Jeremiah came from Tophet where the Lord had sent him to prophesy and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring on this city and all her towns all the doom that I have pronounced against it, because they have stiffened their necks, that they might not hear my words. All right. You know, whenever somebody tells me they think the Bible is boring, it's chapters like these that really remind us that the Bible is definitely not boring. Um, I guess the easiest word I can use to describe the Bible is... Um, Maybe, I mean, and I guess it depends on who wrote which book, but um, sometimes I think that it's a little bit repetitive, and I think that's where people might get lost in the details, especially when it comes to the book of Leviticus. But we're talking about the um, book of Jeremiah today, and Jeremiah is definitely a very eventful book in itself. So let's go ahead and talk about this chapter. In this chapter, the Lord asks Jeremiah to go get for himself a clay flask, and to gather all the important people of um, Jerusalem. And when I say important, I'm talking like well-respected. You know, people look at these elders and they say, they look up to them. They seek them for wisdom. You know, they they believe because of their old age and have how many years they've experienced life that they would have the best advice. So, you know, the Lord, he asked Jeremiah to take this clay flask and also to take all these people in places of respect, including just from the everyday civilians to those who work in the temple, and to take them to the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, um, which is by the entry of the poster gate. So I think right there kind of, um, with, with it being next to the Potsherd gate, excuse me. Yeah, Potsherd, excuse me. 
with it being right there, kind of just kind of showcasing the entirety of what's going to happen to the Valley of the Son of Hinnom. And um, so the Lord, he uses him. And, and also the thing about the Lord is the way he uses his prophets, he creates a very dramatic visual for them to see, kind of creating these visual parables for them to understand. And I'm saying all this because... You know, when we see a piece of broken glass or when we see a broken dish or something, you know, it, it kind of makes us sad in the way that that dish that was once carefully crafted is now just in pieces. And yes, we can glue it back together, but it will never be the same. Um, and in this case, the Lord is describing the flask as something that could never be made whole again. Um, so, you know, he something that he carefully crafted, he is planning on destroying because he's displeased with it. And we see that he's displeased with it because his own people, you know, his own people have been worshiping to these Baal. And I actually just remember, or um, not remembered, I just figured out recently it is pronounced Baal, by the way, and not Baal. Um, I, I figured out it's actually pronounced Baal through a lot of different sources. Um, but nonetheless, you know, his own people are burning incense to these Baal that neither they knew growing up, nor their fathers, nor their fathers before them. So now they're deciding to worship and burn incense to these Baal that are just coming out of nowhere. But even worse, they're also sacrificing their sons, their innocent children, in the fire. And the Lord never commanded for any of that. Because actually... The Lord once um, did actually have his people do that since they wanted to burn um, and make child sacrifices to to um, other gods. And the Lord said, oh, OK, let's see how you guys like that. And uh, his people did not care for it. And he said, good, because that wasn't really something I was asking for. Um, so nonetheless, we kind of see that coming back again. But this time the Lord's like, I'm not even going to entertain this. I'm just going to destroy the land because I am that upset with my people. And so, you know, he's describing the crimes in which they committed um, because the book of Jeremiah actually talks a lot about how the people have been oppressing each other. The people have been, um, you know, being wicked towards one another, scheming one another. But in this case, very specifically, we're talking about the ball that his people have been pursuing but also at the cost of innocent lives. Again, sons were being burned here. Um, so nonetheless, and the Lord is very displeased with the people that were put in charge, you know, the elders of the temple, the elders of, of uh, Jerusalem, who know better. They, they know better, and they're also in places of very high authority, yet they themselves have a mix of they've succumbed to worshiping these ball with other people because hey everyone else is doing it or they're also just kind of turning a blind eye to it going oh i didn't see anything whatever it's what the kids are doing these days but nonetheless the lord is displeased because he put them in these places of of high esteem amongst the people so that they would be able to guide his people in his ways not in just passively allowing them to pursue these incorrect, these false gods and these, um, these avenues that lead to their death. But nonetheless, um, so the Lord is going to bring a devastation upon his people. And one thing we know about the Lord too, is he has the tendency to speak something before it happens. He does this to prove the fact that he is Lord. You know, because if this just happened, people would just chop it up and go, oh, what a coincidence. Or, oh, you know, why was the Lord looking away? But in this case, the Lord is speaking about it because he wants his people to know it was him that sent this travesty. It was him that caused them all this despair and desolation. And it's because of him that they're going to be so desperate and hungry for food that they're going to resort to eating their own children. And we see that in the book of Lamentations. Mothers cooking their own children just for survival. And again, the Lord is speaking all of this, not because he's not because he hates his people. He loves his people, but he's so displeased with them having forsaken him. And the Lord actually promises us that, you know, the Lord will never forsake his righteous, but he will forsake those who forsake him. 
Um, those who make themselves a friend of the world make themselves an enemy of the Lord. And we can't have both. We can't be friends with the world and friends with the Lord at the same time. It, it just doesn't work that way because there's so many things of the world that, that invoke our fleshly desires that, that lead us into sin, that we have to be careful of all these pitfalls. But um, nonetheless, nonetheless, you know, and the Lord is speaking all this to remind his people to fear the Lord. We have to have a healthy understanding of what fear of the Lord means. Fear of the Lord means we know what he can do. And that could be good or bad. That he could, he could bring back um, dry bones from the dead. He can part the waters. He can also send such great calamity that people are forced to eat each other. I mean, there. I mean, if that's not being fearful of the Lord, I, I don't know what is. And he again, he's not doing all this because of his hatred, but he's actually doing this all out of his great love and his anger at being forsaken. Very similar to somebody who pours their heart on a plate, and that then the other person just turns away and ignores them. You know, they put their heart out there and the other person just turns away and goes, well, thanks. You know, that's, that's how the Lord's feeling. He's feeling that anger and rejection, but also he's angry at the fact that innocent children that he has blessed his people with are being killed all for nothing. Because again, these false gods don't even exist. They can't do anything for these people. So they're literally killing their own children in vain. So the Lord is essentially saying, I'm going to give you a reason to have to eat your children. So you can no longer make sacrifices of them. But now you're going to need them for your very own survival. Um, so nonetheless, and, and the Lord uses the prophet Jeremiah to speak all of this to the people that are well respected in, uh, you know, in the tribe of Judah, the city of Jerusalem. He's, and he's doing this in order to kind of urge them how serious this matter is. However, we see right here at the end, um, in Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 15, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on the city and all her towns all the doom that I have pronounced against it, because they have stiffened their necks that they might not hear my words. So right there, you know, um, we see the term stiff necked a lot when it comes to when it comes to um, describing people in the Bible, um, in particular in the Old Testament. Um, but being stiff necked, you know, unable to kind of listen or perhaps take another route than what they were doing. They are so stubborn in their ways that they refuse to look and see if there's another way for them. That way being the Lord God, because also Jesus tells us he is the way, the truth, the life, and that he and the father are the same. So by following the Lord, we seek life. But if we forsake the Lord, then we are, you know, we're seeking sin and the wages of sin are death. Um, and that's what's going to happen to the city. And we also have to remember, too, that though the Lord has spoken this and it, we still have the rest of the book of Jeremiah to go all the way to Lamentations, that the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, but he's rather patient with us because, again, we know he's patient, he's gracious, he's abounding in love and mercy, and he's faithful to forgive us if we confess of our sins. But... In this case, his people were unwilling to repent. His people were unwilling to confess their sins. And so not only did he hand them over to their sin, but he also handed them over to the consequences of their sin, which was the devastation that he has promised to send them because he didn't, he, and he promises this and he's not slow in keeping his promises, but he wants his people to change his way. So he doesn't have to do this. We see in the Bible examples of the Lord relenting from his anger if his people just confess their sins and repent and change their ways. Um, we see it in the book of Jonah. We see it in the book of Amos. You know, we, um, well, I, those are the only two examples I could think of at this moment. But what I'm trying to say here is that the Lord is merciful. But when we turn our ears, or rather, when we stuff our ears with cotton and say, I don't hear anything that the Lord's saying, you know, and, and we make ourselves stiff neck to the Lord, then what choice does the Lord have other than to show us and remind us that he is Lord? 
And that being through the, through some afflictions, you know, that being through reminding us to fear the Lord and remember what it is he can do in our lives. So, you know, that this chapter is a very great reminder of that. Um, but in any case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this word up here. If you guys enjoyed, feel free to like, subscribe, and until next time, I hope all of y'all take care. Bye-bye!